Hello friends, this is Miss Ella. I'm happy to see you again for another Harmony at Home lesson. Are you ready to learn something new? Well, now that we know the names of the notes and their pitches, we are ready to learn how to write them down. So I've invited a special guest to join us. He's an expert at writing down music and he's called a composer. He will show us how he creates a melody in his head and transfers it to paper so that others can enjoy it too. But first, of course, we have our weekly game. Over the last few weeks, we have been playing with a pattern of notes that make up what we call an octave. I hope you have practiced it so it's becoming more familiar to you. We already know how to sing it and so far we have added a clap instead of singing me and a tap on our chest instead of singing so. Let's do it slowly again and try to stay focused so you would know all the time what you need to do. Clap or tap on your chest. No, this is the first note. Ready? Do, do, re, do, do, re, re, do, do, re, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, la, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, la, ti, la, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, la, ti, do, ti, la, fa, re, do. Did you do better than last week? I'm sure you did. Now let's do it faster. No. Ready? No, do, re, do, do, re, re, do, do, re, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, la, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, la, ti, la, fa, re, do, do, re, fa, la, ti, do, ti, la, fa, re, do. How was it? Was it hard? Keep practicing this week with the clap and the tap on your chest. Now that you know it better, you can teach it to your family and you can all do it together. I'm sure you can be a great teacher. And teaching someone something you know will help you master it. Next week we will add one last thing before we move to a new game. Now that you know the notes so well, let's learn how to write them down. In our previous lessons, we have been learning the names of the notes and their pitches. And we have been using steps to visualize the movements of these pitches up, down, and jumping several steps at a time. Do you remember I told you that in music we don't put notes on steps? When we write music, we use these lines. Together, they make what we call a staff. How many lines do you see here? Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five. So there are five lines that we're going to use, but there are also spaces between the lines. Can we count the spaces? One, two, three, four. These spaces are as important as the lines and we're going to use them too. So, how does it really work? Well, the notes can be positioned on the lines or between the lines, and their pitches will be related to their position on the staff. The higher the note is positioned on the staff, the higher its pitch. And what happens if there are no more lines and I want to go higher or lower, you might ask? The answer is very logical. We add more lines, but they are smaller. We can add them above the highest line or beneath the lowest line, under the first line. 
Do you remember the song we learned from Ghana in one of our early lessons? Let's take it as an example. When we learned this song, I showed you the words position on steps, remember? And we talked about the fact that the melody was going down. The first note is repeated, but since it's the same pitch, we actually have only five different notes. La, 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 la. Let's say that the first note of this song is on the second line. For now, we will be using whole notes because we're just talking about the pitch, not the rhythm. We already said that the melody goes down and since there are no jumps, it's as if I were going down the stairs, only this time I will use my staff. La, 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 la. The second sentence was the same as the first one, remember? So I will start on the same line, the second line, and go down again. La, 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 la. The third sentence was longer and started higher. Do you remember the big jump we had between the last note of the second sentence and the first note of the third sentence? La, la. Do you remember the name of this jump? I told you we call this seven step jump an octave. La, la. This is the highest note in this song. Now we need to go down. Here again, the first note is repeated, but since it's the same pitch, we only have four different notes. La, 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 la. Then what? The next note la, la, is higher, but there is no jump. It's just a note above the last one. La, la. Then four notes going down again. La, 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 la. Same thing with the next notes. One up and three down. La, 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 la. Then one up la, and a small jump down. La, and that's the whole thing. Well, we are still missing the rhythm, but we will take a look at that in our next lesson when we will learn a new song. Now let's sing this song slowly and watch where we place the notes on the staff. Mm, first note. Ready? You see, that's the way musicians know which notes to play on their instruments or sing. Those notes can be called by the names we used in our recent lessons. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti. But every note also has a letter name. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. You might learn that later, if you learn how to play an instrument. I hope you will, because it's really fun to learn to play an instrument. Now you know how composers use the staff to communicate their ideas to musicians. We have already learned about different composers like Bach, Mozart, Clara Schumann and others. But they all lived a very long time ago. You might wonder are there any composers alive today? Yes, of course there are, and we're going to meet one of them today. His name is Jeff Beal, and he has written lots of music for film and television, and has won many awards for his compositions. Let's 
meet him and see if he can tell us about his own experience as a composer. Hello Jeff, I'm so excited to have you here for Harmony at Home. It's a real pleasure to introduce you to my students. Hello class. Our lesson today is about creating musical ideas and writing them down. I'm sure that with your experience you can tell us much more about it. Well thank you and welcome to my studio. My name is Jeff, I'm a composer and I write a lot of music for movies. Let me show you a little bit of what I do. Now that's from a film about a man named Jackson Pollock who was a painter. And you can tell from that music that he was very excited about that painting he was working on. And I hope that's how you feel when you start to write your very own melodies. As you've learned in your lessons, learning the notes and how to put them on the page is an important part of writing music. But the most important part is your own imagination and also the feelings inside of you. Music is really just another language we use to tell stories. And part of what I love about my job is I'm able to help people to feel what's happening in a film or a story that's part of the music that I've written. Now, melodies is a tool that we have to tell that story. Melodies can have all sorts of shapes and sizes. For example, it might go up. Or it might go down like this. In fact, those two parts might go together, kind of like a question and an answer. A melody can repeat just one note. And that's a melody because of the rhythm it's played on. Sometimes a melody will repeat a lot of notes to really make a point, kind of like repeating the same word over and over again or saying it really loud. You start to hear that note in your head and you remember it because it's repeated. The composer has told you that's an important note and pay attention to that. Now also melodies can have a feeling associated to them. For, for example, what if I write a melody that has a lot of wide skips? It has a big open feeling. It feels hopeful maybe or yeah, like an adventure. But if the melody has a lot of short, short skips, it might sound like this. That sounds a little bit more like a puzzle or maybe a mystery or something. Now, one of the fun things about writing music on your own is that really are, there are no rules. In fact, a lot of what I do is just sort of experiment until I find something I like. pretty nice, but I can maybe do better, or I might try a different idea. And I'll keep on doing that over and over and over again until I really find something that I feel like it has a certain personality, right? And that one felt pretty good. It kind of tells a story. And it makes me go on a little bit of a journey with the way the notes are, are weaving their way through time. I often think that writing music is a lot like painting a picture. In fact, the colors you choose can have a lot to do with the way your music feels. For example, I might write a melody that sounds like this. But if I play it on a different instrument, it'll have a different feeling. together, I put them down on a musical score page. Each one of these is a line of music with the five lines like you've been learning. Then all of those sounds come together to make the final piece. I hope you 
you have fun learning how to write your very own music, and I look forward to hearing some of your music someday. Thank you so much, Jeff. This was a wonderful opportunity to learn from an accomplished composer. Goodbye. Jeff had so much interesting information to share. I hope he has inspired some of you to think about writing your own musical ideas, and you already know enough to get started. Before we end our lesson, there is one more thing I want to do with you. I would like us to repeat the notes we have been working on using a sign language. This language was used about 100 years ago by Zoltan Kodai, a Hungarian composer and educator. Kodai believed that using different signs for each note would help children memorize the notes and their pitches, and even today, many educators still use this sign language. Let's try it together slowly. You just need to look at me and sing with me while doing the right sign for each note. Ready? Do, re, mi, fa, so, Let's read again. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. You see? That wasn't hard. Now let's finish our lesson with a beautiful song from a musical called The Sound of Music. Do you know what a musical is? A musical is like a play that uses a mixture of speaking and song, and sometimes dance too. This song is about the notes we have learned. Let's listen to the song and do the signs I just taught you. You can see me on the screen doing it with you, so just look at me if you don't remember. Do, a deer, a female deer, Ray, a drop of golden sun, Me, a name I call myself, Far, a long, long way to run, <laughs> So, a needle pulling thread, La, a note to follow so, <laughs> Tea, a drink with jam and bread, That will bring us back to do oh 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 do a deer a female deer ray a drop of golden sun me a name i call myself far a long long way to run so a needle pulling thread la a note to follow so tea a drink with jam and bread that will bring us back to do a deer, a female deer, Ray, a drop of golden sun, me, a name I call myself, far, a long, long way to run. So, a needle for you, friend, long, a note to follow, so, tea, a drink of jam and bread, that will bring us back to do. Do, Ray, me, far, so, that was fun, right? We learned today how to write notes on the staff like real composers. Next week we will add some rhythm to our musical staff and learn a song from a faraway country in a language that might be new to you. I hope you will join me for this special journey. See you next week and until then, make it a musical week! <laughs>